For this portion of the texture assignment, we're going to look at how do we take photographs of texture that we create ourselves or we find and manipulate them in a way that allows us to use them in our design work. This is a really powerful tool. It's a really great system to use when you want to add texture to your work. It's also a great way to incorporate things that you make by hand. So any kind of sketching that you might do that you want to get into the computer and have it retain the quality of the sketch. This is a really great strategy for that as well. So here I have the template for this open. This is on the learning management system. It's an Adobe Illustrator template. You'll notice there's just one artboard or page here. And then there's a place for the photograph, the process texture, and the utilized texture. You'll be doing this three times. So those are repeated. And that's where you will put the work that you build for this project. One of the photographs that you do must be a handmade texture that you make yourself. So it needs to be something that you do with a pen, a marker, a pencil, a paintbrush. It doesn't really matter exactly how you make it, but we want to make sure that you explore that process of you making something and then bringing it into the computer and manipulating it to be used. So the first step will be to save the file. And then the next thing is really to find the texture. So again, you can use photographs you take yourself. You're welcome to go shoot textures that you find on some kind of a camera, or you can find these on the internet. That's okay too. Remember that just one of them has to be made by hand. So that one will need to be photographed or potentially scanned, whatever is easier for you. But let's look at some tips on how to find these textures. The first thing is when we're looking for textures, we're going to need ones that are large. So we need large images that are high resolution. It's going to work better. So I'm going to search for wood grain and then I'm going to go to tools and I'm going to say I want size large. That's going to make sure that I'm going to find images that are large and high resolution, which will work really well for this. You also want to think about the kind of textures that you pick. I chose to search for wood grain because they have a lot of variety. Some of them, the wood grain is very obvious. It's really enhanced and kind of interesting and unique. Other photographs, you'll see the wood grain is much more subtle. And that's okay too. They're just going to create different kinds of textures. In general, I find that the ones that are a little bit more exaggerated work better. We also want to avoid textures that have watermarks. If you look at this one, it has watermarks on it. And that's going to mess up our texture. So that's really not going to work. We also want to avoid things like this. This actually isn't a photograph. It's a vector illustration of wood grain. So we want to make sure that what we're selecting are photographs as well. But you're welcome to use anything you like. You don't have to have the rights to these images. So don't worry about that since it's just an assignment for school that you'll be turning in for grading. Another thing I like to show is a tool or a website that can be really useful as well. It's called Pexels. Pexels is a stock photography website that's completely free. So not only will this be useful for this assignment, but it's actually really useful for your future assignments as well. It's a great resource that designers use that allows us to find images that we can use without paying for them and that we will have the correct rights to use. There are others like Pexels, there's Unsplash and other ones that you can explore, but these are really useful sites to know. So some good wood grain in here as well. It could be smart to avoid ones that have objects in them unless they're very small and you think you can crop around them. It's better to have one where it's all the texture because that might work a little bit better. So just another thing to consider is if there's objects, make sure they're small and in a place where you could easily crop them out. So once you find the images that you want or you get the photographs that you wanted to take, the next step is to get them on your computer and open them up in Adobe Photoshop. So I have two open here that we can look at together. The first one is my handmade texture. So I just used a pencil and did some diagonal shading really quickly. This will be really interesting when we get in there and manipulate it, but you can do anything you like. Like I said, you can work with paint, you can work with marker, you can doodle, you can create lines. It doesn't really matter what you do. We just really want you to explore the connection between you making something by hand and then going through this manipulation process. It is a wood grain texture. It's just one I found on the internet that I liked the knot in the wood. I liked the overall wood grain and I thought it would work well. So the first step since we're working in Adobe Photoshop and we haven't before is I want to go to window and show you the workspace I'm using. So I'm using the essentials default. I'm going to reset that just so that you know that if you go through that process and use that same workspace, you will see what I'm seeing. 
If you remember on this assignment, there's actually a, a bunch of squares where we're gonna put these images and we wanna show all of the process that we go through to get to that final manipulated texture that we're gonna utilize. So the best thing to do at the beginning here is to actually crop these into squares. So I'm gonna go over here and make sure I have that rectangular marquee tool selected. And then I'm gonna click and drag to select the part of the texture that I wanna use. But when I'm doing that, I wanna hold down shift. That's gonna make sure that I'm creating a square, a perfect square, which is what we need. Once you create one, you can move the marquee around to look at what part you're gonna crop. If you wanna make it bigger or smaller though, it's really easier to do command D and deselect and then create a new marquee. So I don't know, I kind of like that knot in the wood. I think that's nice. I'm gonna deselect try it one more time. Maybe that's good. I like the wood grain on this side of the image as well. So once you have the area that you want, go up to image and do crop. And that's gonna crop that into a square. Then we need to save all the steps along the way. So the next step here will be to do a save as. So we save the original photograph in a square format. So I'm just gonna call this wood grain. I'm gonna keep it as a JPEG, and I want a maximum quality here. All of these settings are correct, so I'm gonna click OK. Now we're gonna go through the steps of manipulating this photograph. What we're gonna create in the end is a bitmapped TIFF, and that's a combination of a manipulation that we'll do in Photoshop to this image, and then a file type that we will save it as that's really useful and powerful in Adobe Illustrator and also InDesign. You can use these in InDesign as well, though it's something you'd more commonly use in Illustrator. So we have this saved. Let's go ahead and do it on the sketch as well. So this is my little sketch that I made. I'm gonna just create a marquee quickly. All right, then come up here to image, crop, do a save as, I'll call this sketch. So then the next step is to actually play with the levels of the image. So I'm gonna to go to adjustment levels, and this is gonna bring up this dialog box where I can move these sliders back and forth. And it's gonna manipulate the lights and darks of the image. Because one thing that happens here is the light part of the image, anything that's white when we do this process will actually completely drop out. So if you go way over here, the texture is gonna be much more subtle. If there's a lot more darks, it's gonna be more obvious. So I want something in between. I really wanna make sure that I can see that wood grain, that it's apparent, but I also wanna make sure there's some white dropping out in this so that the wood grain itself will really show up. So, that looks about right to me. I think that's gonna work. And there's no right or wrong on this. You can experiment with how you pull this off. So I'm gonna click okay. The next step is to actually make this grayscale. So I'm gonna to go to image mode, grayscale, discard that color. So now it's black and white. And then the last step is to actually go to image mode bitmap. So the bitmap menu option is now there because we turned it grayscale. So I'm gonna to go to bitmap. And for this, we wanna leave these settings alone. This is exactly what we want, diffusion, dither, and we wanna export it at 300 pixels per inch. In the future, not on this assignment, you can play with these settings and it will do different things. There's different options here, but for the sake of this, it's important that you keep these same settings. So I'm gonna click OK. There it is. You'll notice that the whole image is now rendered with many little dots. So that's one thing that's useful about this. It's actually gonna reduce the file size and make it easier to have this texture in our Illustrator file. It also looks funny, but if you printed this or exported it, it would actually look amazing, particularly in print. It's actually amazing how much this will look like the actual wood grain when it prints. So it's a really interesting technique. And again, it will really look different than it does on your screen. So the next step will be to do another save as, and I wanna save it as a TIFF, because I've made it a bitmap, and now I wanna make it a TIFF, because it's the combination of those two things that will make this really useful. So I'll click save. We'll keep all these settings default. And so we're done with the wood grain. Let's go back to the sketch. So we have this cropped. Now we need to go through those steps again. I'm gonna to go to adjustments, levels. Here I really wanna make sure the paper in the background is completely white, because I want that to go away. This is where I was talking about you don't have smudges or you don't wanna use non-white paper or else those will really impact the way that your bitmap TIFF ends up looking. So. I'm not sure I want it to be quite that aggressive. I'm gonna go back a little bit so you can see the gradation in the pencil. And I think that looks pretty good. 
Now I'm gonna come up here and go to image mode, grayscale, discard that color, and then lastly, bitmap, and I'll keep these the same. So now I have that file, I'm gonna do a save as, and save it as that TIFF, perfect. So I'm only gonna do this twice, but remember you'll be doing a third time with another image. So once we have that finished, we can go back to our template and we can start plugging things in. So now we need to place those images in this file so we can start showing how the texture will be used. So to do that, you could drag all of the images off of your desktop into this file, that would be one way, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do a file place and I'll navigate and find those four. Here's the four we need, the two TIFFs and the two JPEGs. Again, you'll have another TIFF and another JPEG because you're gonna do three of them. But there they are, I'm gonna click place, and then I can go ahead and start placing them in here. So all four of them. But they're really big, I need them much smaller. So I'm gonna zoom out, and I'm gonna go ahead and just group them together. And then I'll hold down shift and make them smaller, like that, it'll just make it a little bit more manageable to work with for now and then I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup them. One thing that's really important here is we wanna show the progression and it should be the same crop and same size each time. So you wanna make sure that you're scaling things together as you're working on this. So here's that original wood grain photograph, so I'll put that right there. Here's the original sketch photograph, I'll put that over here. And then here's the bitmap tiffs. You can see that the white is gone, it's transparent, we can see through it. So you're already seeing some of the advantage of this, the way they can layer on top of each other, and there's some transparency that shows what's underneath. So here's that sketch, I'll put it over here, and then the wood grain here as well. So one thing that's important, again, is that we want these to be in the same place each time. I mean, they don't have to be exactly, but as close as we can get it. So I'm gonna move this up, so it's right at the upper left corner. And then what we wanna do, actually, is mask these inside these shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the photo. I'm gonna move it to the back so that the frame's on top. And then I'm gonna select both of them and go to Object, Clipping, Mask, Make. All right, looks like this one's already behind. So I'm just gonna select both, make that clipping mask. That's Command-7. And these look like they're in the same spot, which is perfect. So now we get to that utilized texture. The utilized texture is where you're gonna play with color and look at how you can layer color to make something interesting. So here I actually wanna change this frame to be a fill, so it's black. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just select this and hold option and slide it over. And I wanna get it pretty close to being exactly on top. And then I want to actually go to object, arrange, and make sure that my texture is on top of that solid black square. Then we're gonna click inside the mask. So I'm gonna click on this, click inside of it, and I'll be able to actually select the texture itself. Once I do that, I can change the color. This is where these get really powerful. You can actually change the color directly in Adobe Illustrator, and you can change what color it is so that it layers on that other color in an interesting way. So you could play with something really bright, some bright combination like this. Or you can play with something more subtle too. Maybe we wanna go with like a dark gray and it's more of a subtle tonal relationship which can sometimes be really useful. We can also select the texture on top and then if I hold shift and select and drag, I'll get the black box behind it. I can change the black too to something. Maybe here I wanna have a really bright background and make the texture really dark. So you're starting to see why this is powerful. You get a lot of the ability to manipulate the color of the texture directly in Illustrator, which can be really handy. So I don't know, I kind of like that one. Maybe I'll go a little bit different on the background color, but I kind of like on this one having a brighter background color and then a dark texture color. So that's pretty cool. So that's what you're gonna do for the utilized texture. You're gonna mess with the color of them to show how you could utilize that in the computer. So now let's work on this one. I'm gonna put both of these to the back so that I can see the frame. And that'll allow me to make sure I get them in the same spot. So you can see here, I look at where these cross hatches are. This one needs to come up a little bit more. All right, so more or less those are now in the same spot, which is what we want. So then I'm gonna go ahead and do some masking. So I'll select both of these, mask it inside, select both of these, mask inside. And then on this one, let's do something more subtle. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a color. I'll change the fill. Maybe I'll go to like a brown. Maybe that would be kind of nice, a dark brown color, okay? And I'll slide this on top. 
best I can to get it directly on top of there. And then I'll do object, arrange, bring to front. And then I'll select inside and get that actual texture and start playing with the color. So maybe here I want to go for like a darker brown color. Maybe that'll create something more subtle here. Maybe that's too subtle. I can't really see it, right? So I want to create something maybe a little bit more obvious. That's cool. See how subtle that is? Sometimes that's where these textures can be really useful. When they get really, really subtle, it can really make something that has a lot of character to it without getting too crazy. I think I want to change this just a little bit more, but I'm getting where I want to be. Just a little bit lighter. All right, that looks great. So hopefully you're seeing how this can be a really powerful tool, how it can really help you bring texture into your work. And again, a way to connect things that you make by hand with the actual computer. So it's a great technique to remember. To finish this up, since there's just one page, I just need to make this into a PDF. So I'm gonna go to file, do a save as, make sure I have PDF selected. Since there's only one page or artboard, nothing to do here. Make sure you navigate to where you wanna save it. I'm gonna go ahead and click save. Save again with the default, and that will create a PDF file that I can then upload to the learning management system for grading. So as always, you can write your instructor if you have any questions at all, but I hope you enjoy this assignment and have fun learning how you can manipulate photographs to create interesting textures that you can use in your design work.